Old Henry by Joan W. Bloss. The story begins when a stranger appears and moves into a house that was vacant for years. No one thought he, was, he meant to stay. The house was drafty, dark and grey, and more than seven years had passed since anyone had lived there last. He meant to stay, he had no doubt. It suited him from inside out. And in its vast and dusty spaces, all the things he had found places. That Henry. The neighbours watched him moving in and promised each other he'd soon begin to fix things up a bit. He did not think of it. With money enough to pay the rent, his books, birds and cooking pots, he was content and never did notice, or else didn't care, that people whispered everywhere, that place is a disgrace. At least, they remarked, you would think that he could show a little respect for the neighbourhood. That place is a disgrace. At last they decided to form a committee and went to him saying, We are proud of our city. If you'd only help out, think how good it would look. Excuse me, he bowed and went back to his book. That Henry. Then they fined him fines, they threatened jail, they wrote him long letters and sent them by mail. Dear Henry. Still the hollyhocks wilted, unwatered, unkept, the gatepost stayed crooked, the walk stayed unswept, and things went on as they'd begun, and he angered his neighbours one by one. Can't we make him sweep his walks? No, there's nothing we can do. You nasty Polly, shoe, bird shoe. So unfriendly, never talks. On a day in November, they sought the advice of the mayor who suggested being nice. Being nice? Please try it twice. But when two of the ladies baked him a pie, he said, I'm not hungry, no thank you, goodbye. And when three of the men said they'd shovel his snow, he quickly said, no, we told you so. Now Henry too had had his fill the night he grumbled, I never will live like the rest of them, neat and the same. I am sorry I came. Then he packed some things in shopping bags and tied the rest in three old rags. He didn't make plans, he just left a short note, a hastily written, gone to Dakota. He taped it to the big front door. And no one lived there anymore. His day lilies bloomed. His flocks grew tall. They picked his apples in the fall. They picked his apples now and then. Someone would ask, remember when? Remember when? Remember when? Later still in winter's snow, they asked one another, where did he go? Will he come again? His house looks so empty, so dark in the night, and having him gone doesn't make us more right. That Henry. Maybe some other time we'd get along, not thinking that somebody has to be wrong, and we don't ha have to make such a terrible fuss, 
because everyone isn't exactly like us. Meanwhile, old Henry, to his great surprise, was missing the neighbours who'd brought him the pies. In spite of their nagging, he really did care for them and their street, so he wrote to the mayor. Dear Mr Mayor, I'm finding it hard to be far from my house and my tree and my yard. If I mended the gate and I shoveled the snow, would they not scold my birds? Could I let my grass grow? Please write and tell me the answers so then we can all get together. Sincerely yours, Henry.